Hello folks and welcome back to Creature Bikes. Um, this is the uh, uh, Sixer that I've been doing videos about. Uh, I've been informed by uh, the gentleman who originally owned this bike called Colin. That, uh, well actually he was the second owner. Uh, another man called Mr. Reese owned it before him. It's a mid 70s. I thought it was mid 60s. It's mid 70s. Um, now, the reason I haven't got any further with the bike since, other than stripping the paint off is due to the uh, COVID-19 problem. Um, but obviously this has given me a time to go a little bit further than I was going to go with the stripping and cleaning of the bike. Um, everything has polished up beautifully. Um, as you can see, the, the, the lugs... Have, have, have come up wonderful. Um, the forks haven't cleaned up too bad, there was a fair bit of rust on it. But not being able to get the stuff that I need to finish this is what's causing the problem. Um, it's, it's, I kind of like it like this. I was, <laughs> uh, I was thinking about just making some clear coat on it and uh, leaving it polished still, but there you go. Anyway. Before I can go any further with this bike, I need to make sure I've uh, got a bike to ride because I'll need to strip this before I uh, crack on. So um, the plan is uh, to get my old bike back on. Um, so, as if by magic, voila. Um, this is my uh, early 50s, early to mid 50s Holdsworth Monsoon. Um, this was a bike that was given to me by a friend Dave, um, cheers Dave, uh, I've had this quite a few years now this bike but uh, I've been slowly modifying it, making it run a little bit better, um, I'll put a picture in a minute up of what it used to look like, um, right, uh, actually there's nothing actually wrong with this bike uh, other than the fact that the seat post is jammed and so is the uh, stem uh, they, they are well and truly seized up um, they still work but they're seized um, the only thing that's wrong with it is a puncher which I've uh, got to fix so that's going to be what this video is about I'm going to run through how to do this uh, on all different types of wheels um, but anyway this is the Holdsworth. Look at the lugs. Oh, look at the lugs. Oh. So, right, okay, let's uh, crack on. Right, before I start this job, uh, let me run you through what you'll need. Uh, you'll need an inner tube or puncher repair, whichever you prefer. I prefer inner tubes. Um, the price of uh, puncher repair kits now, you can get three inner tubes for that, so you might as well buy inner tubes. Uh, three tyre levers. Uh, you'll probably need, if it's a mountain bike, you'll probably need two 15mm spanners. Uh, some of the BMXs go up to a 19mm spanner. Um, but uh, for today's purposes, uh, I have a quick release wheel, so I don't need spanners. And a, a pump. Uh, this is a stirrup pump. This is one of the better types. Um, but any pump will do. Oh, and you'll need one of these. This is a Bob. Um, he's very handy. He fetches things for me. Now, if you're unsure about what inner tube to use, um, if you, uh, as you can see, this this is a, a 723 to 32. The 700 refers to the size of the wheel. The 2332 that refers to uh, the width of the wheel uh, or, or the chunkiness of the wheel. Um, if you're unsure which one you need, if you look somewhere on the side of your tyre, it should say, now I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but 
just on the side of the tyre there it says 723 C so that's your inner tube size on there now there are also different valve types uh, this is a Presta valve which is the tall skinny one with a brass screw fixing on the top um, these are mainly for uh, big wheeled bikes uh, like racers um, or uh, competition mountain bikes um, most of you will be more familiar with the uh, Schrider valves which go on most cars, most mountain bikes, most BMXs. Um, this is the Schrider valve which is the one you'll probably all be more familiar with. Uh, this is more like the ones on the car. Now if you look at the depth of this wheel, uh, you'll notice that this is slightly deeper than a lot of wheels um, therefore you may need to buy sometimes a slightly longer valve stem uh, in a tube. Um, some of the nicer tubes tell you what size they are. Right okay um, the first thing you want to be doing is to uh, make sure that the the tyre itself is pulled away from the rim. Uh, when these are pumped up at a very high poundage they can stick to the rim sometimes and that goes for all tyres um, when you loosen this up you'll find that this will help you actually lever the tyre off uh, a little tip just here I've put a piece of tape marking the place of where the tyre sat this helps you when you want to locate the puncher particularly if you're going to repair it but the reason I do this is so that I can then check the tyre and make sure that nothing's le left in, like bits of glass or tacks or whatever's punctured it. Um, so that's quite a good little tip. Right, you take your tyre levers, try to use plastic ones. Um, the metal ones tend to pinch a little bit. Uh, they will pinch the tyre and pinch the inner tube. Um, if you're taking out a punctured one replacing it, I suppose it doesn't really matter, but um, I find the uh, metal ones a bit too aggressive. Right, uh, now we're going to start levering the tyre off. Um, what you do is you hook one in like that, flick it under the edge of the tyre here, then you hook one in. They always have hooks on the bottom, so you can hook these around the spokes and hold it in place. It's like your third hand. Uh, move around the tyre a little bit, do it again. Now with these tyres it can be quite difficult because they're very very tight fitting, they have to be because of the pressures that they're pumped up to. Um, some mountain bikes and BMXs you can just get it off with your hands, it's no, no big deal. Um, like an idiot I've started near the uh, stem the valve stem which always makes things a bit awkward <laughs> hey we'll go back this way <laughs> that's better all right once you've done the third one in these two will loosen up so you can take one out pop that underneath take that one out pop that one underneath then once you get to a certain point you can just lever it off like this once you get to this point start to remove your inner tube but what I like to do is always leave the valve in as you're pulling the inner tube out uh, this again is for locating where the puncher might be uh, so pull out your inner tube then I'm undoing this little brass attachment on the top of the valve which releases it and allows air in and out um, right. and what I do here oh, get the pump and find out where the puncher is so what I do pop that on like that Pump up the inner tube. Now, if I run my hands around the inner tube, 
I should be able to feel where the air is coming from. I can't find it yet. Now sometimes this may be from the valve stem. Right, um, I couldn't locate it by hand because it is only a tiny slow puncher. But uh, I took the inner tube out. Now if I immerse it in water, you'll be able to clearly see where the air is coming from. Um, now this is important for two reasons, finding this hole. Uh, one, obviously, if you're going to repair the inner tube, uh, you need to know where the hole is, obviously. Um, if you're not going to repair the inner tube, you still need to do this to find out whereabouts in the tyre the uh, piece of debris or glass has got through. Now I've popped the valve back in to place so that I can hold the inner tube up and work out exactly where on the tyre the puncture was made. Now I've taken it off so it could be either on this side or this side uh, so we'll have to look at both. Right, if we look here, the puncture is here. Uh, I can't see anything obvious on this side. Aha, uh -huh, hang on, what's this here? I think that's a stone in the tyre. Yeah, it is. Look, there's a little bit of stone in the tyre. Now, I don't think that's enough to cause the puncture, and it's in the wrong place. But these are good to remove because they will cause a puncture sooner or later. Um, right, let's try it the other way. Right, the puncture was here. So I look. Oh, now there is a slash in the tyre there. Oh, hang on, what's this here? There you go. I think that's what's caused the puncture. Whatever that is there. Yeah, it's a bit of stone there. Uh, yeah, I've taken it out now. That's sharp. You can see it's like a little bit of flint. That's probably caused the puncture. Right, uh, now for replacing the inner tube. Um, as you can see, it's a fairly long stemmed Presta type valve. Uh, this little collar here is to hold the inner tube in place. Um, make sure you take this off before you put the inner tube in, otherwise uh, your, your inner tube, uh, your uh, valve will be rattling around. Right, put that in the hole. There, put your stem in the hole. Then start to feed the tyre in slowly. tucking it just inside the tyre, getting it out of harm's way because when you put this back on, this tyre is so tight that you will need to lever it in. Um, right, before, before trying to pop the tyre back on, a good idea is to just, just put a tiny, tiny little bit of air into the inner tube just so it makes it round um, this again will, will aid you to make sure that you don't pinch the inner tube right then slowly start to pop the tire in now that cut this collar wait until um, you've actually got the tire on before you screw this right up because if you Put it on very very tight it pulls the inner tube down inside the wheel and sometimes the tire can't locate in the rim so it's always a good idea just to leave a little bit of room on there just so that you can wiggle this around right. and slowly start to pop the tire on making sure that the inner tubes tucked in Okay, right, um, I've popped it on as much as I can by hand, so uh, now it's time to use the levers. Now you've got to be very careful when you're doing this, because you really don't want to pinch that in the tube, otherwise you're going to have to take it out and put another one in. So, gently does it. 
it will get to a point eventually where you can pop it on with your with your hand don't concern yourself about this twisting this is just where you're putting it under a lot of tension there you go that's on right once the tire is on um, just look around the tire just checking between the tire and the rim of the bike here just to make sure that none of the inner tube is sort of tucked underneath the edge of the tire uh, this looks pretty good um, now what I like to do is just loosen this push that valve right up inside just to make sure that that inner tube is seated right up inside the tire uh, then it's time to pump it up now when pumping a tire up one of the important things to remember is not to pump up the tire when it's standing upright um, either do it on the bike suspended or lay it flat now the reason for this is if you try to pump it up while it's standing on one edge um, it will push the tire out of line um, so what you will end up with is the tire will be tucked in too tight down here and it will be loose up here now what happens then is you get a bubble in the side of the tire when it pops off um, so just check that that's all seated nice and evenly and then you can pump it up now. Okay, uh, as you can see, I've taken this up to uh, 90 PSI on the meter. Uh, these racer tyres have to go up really quite hard. Most uh, mountain bikes are between 40 pounds of pressure and uh, 65. Um, most BMX is 40 pounds. Um, right, once this is pumped up, release your pump. Make sure you tighten this little valve lock here small piece here tighten up the ring then it's time to pop it back on the bike right now replacing the wheel um, if your bike is geared what you'll need to do first lift the wheel up into position almost into position make sure that the chain that's hanging at the bottom here is over the top of your wheel nut Right. The top part should be sitting on the top of the gears. Once it's like this, if you push down on the derailleur, it should slide up into position. Once you've got it there, pop the wheel into place and tighten it up. And job done. One puncher fixed.